Good morning, everyone, and good afternoon to those of you in a different time zone. Welcome to today's session. This is World Collective's webinar on impact shopping. And today we have with us the founder of Sandgrove, Tatiana Alexa. Um, Tatiana is multi-talented, <laughs> brilliant woman. Um, she's been in tech, in startup companies, also in medicine, in finance, and many other things that um, she's got a very impressive background. So we're thrilled to have her here today. My name is Britta Cabanos. I am the lead here at, for global innovation um, for World Collective and also the founder of Inside Fashion Design. And Tatiana today is going to share with us her new launch of a business that she has founded called, uh, well, Sandgrove is the company. Impact Shopping is what she's going to share with us today. And her work has been featured in the New York Times, Cyber Times, Daily News, and many, many more. So we're thrilled to have her sharing her her work and her efforts in this program that she has developed, which is to help us all reach the sustainability and environmental goals and make a stronger impact in our work in the fashion industry. Um, today's session, we're going to, I'll share with you a little bit of the format that we're going to go through. Um, first of all, Tatiana will share with us three pillars, three categories that are the key focus of achieving um, striving towards those goals and what impact shopping can help us achieve. One, number one, is the efficiency while launching a new collection. Number two is the carbon footprint that um, we all make and how we can reduce that. And number three is the buying power of the younger generation. That Gen Z um, generation is really going to affect the future and they're gonna ones that have the, the buying power um, in the future and how can we tap into that and really make a make a an opportunity for them to make an impact in their in their shopping and how they're spending their dollars. After that, we're going to go into uh, Tatiana will share what impact shopping is and go into a presentation that will explain all of it and it's going to she's going to tell us it's a how impact shopping is a better way to sell and to create a better way to shop. It's gonna eliminate overproduction and help with your inventory, cutting down on environmental um, you know, damages and impact. And, and um, so that will be what we're gonna to cover today. Again, thank you all for coming. This is a super important topic and I'm very thrilled to be hosting this on, the, on behalf of World Collective. And so with that, I'm going to pass it off to Tatiana to dive right in. Thank you, Britt. Uh, honored to be invited to present to World Collective. I think it's a very uh, important initiative. Um, I'm super excited that you guys are uh, connecting the dots within the industry between brands, manufacturers, uh, retail tech, and uh, supply chain. So. Um, I'm uh, happy to cover the 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 um, subjects that um, that uh, Brita mentioned, and you might wonder, you know, what a, uh, why trained uh, doctor um, is doing sustainable uh, sustainable fashion, I, and I can only tell you that um, I've been trained to um, treat the disease rather than the symptom, and that's pretty much drives me every time when we um launching a new new business that is always driven by changing the status quo so treat me as a doctor who is uh, very ambitious with like we can treat that huge huge problem of overproduction which in fashion alone um counts up to 30 percent and this is the usually it's the that uh, elephant in the room that nobody wants to talk about. Um, the public information is very, very limited. Uh, again, this is never publicized, but we all know that the industry produce a huge excess. And from someone coming from, again, from this background that I have that is in technology as well, 
um, it's a mind boggling because when I serviced Wall Street, we were counting cents of dollars and how come fashion industry doesn't count its, its kids, right? It's units, uh, whatever they are and where they, where, where they go. So um, why, we, why the industry overproduced? And I ask this question over and over and over again. And usually the answer is like, we are guessing and speculating because we don't know for sure. We are, yes, everyone uses forecasting, everyone uses trend reports. <laughs> uh, uh, buyers or people who um, in the conference rooms uh, decides about the uh, shaping the new collections, um, never ask market directly. We never know what consumers actually need or will buy. And that's, uh, we believe that there should be a solution that bring consumers on board at the time when these decisions are made. So what I'm about to present, think about it from a point of view of launching new collections or doing just the product drops and matching supply and demand uh, dynamically and doing it by asking not AI, not algorithm, but the best brain on planet, which is a collective brain of individual consumers. We also believe that this is about time to uh, change the practice at this um, because at least in this country and in Europe too, um, kids are educated on importance of planet and they have these aspirations and up to 80% are saying that they would like to do things differently than their parents, but they're lacking tools. So how about we give them tools to act on this, uh, on their aspirations? And this is the, again, the buying power of these consumers, um, responsible and conscious consumers that are coming, um, but we see it as a pent up demand that doesn't have a much channel to, to act upon. Um, the third point that I would like to make um, from the you know very start, and hopefully you will see it uh, throughout the uh, formal presentation too, is that the excess that we make and these unsold goods that we not only use financial resources, right? This is somewhere in the uh, retail price um, that pretty much we are relying on consumers to subsidize uh, this uh, wasteful way of... Uh, uh, pumping new product to the market. Uh, so it's not only the financial cost that we have an um, opportunity to uh, to um, control and do better, uh, but it also comes with the waste of environmental resources because when we overproduce, we pretty much pumping unnecessary emission. We are uh, using water that belongs not only to individual business, uh, but it belongs belongs to everyone. So with these three, you know, big pillars that Brita announced at the beginning, we are trying to come up with the solution uh, that has connects these three dots um, together. Um, so let me show you what, um, what we see as a solution. I'll just chime in for a second. Feel free to um, use the chat and ask any questions along the way. I'll watch that and, and um, we'd love to have any questions you have. Just type them in there and, and we'll, we'll address those as they come in. Sorry, of course it came not on the first page, but this is the beginning. Uh, so the solution that connects um, these three big dots um, 
we call it impact shopping. Um, and we believe that this is a solution for profitable sustainability, where we can make impact both for the uh, individual, uh, for the businesses and for planet. So it's, um, as again, as we covered that overproduction uh, produces waste and this is a status quo of the industry. This is the way the industry operates now. Um, and that's the problem that we are trying to solve and the opportunities to um, serve to consumers that are looking for um, ways to contribute to their sustainable values. Um, recent Gartner research put um, that demand as actually, as you can see, higher than the reaction for uh, celebrity influ influencer posts, higher than ads and commercials, higher than media coverage. And these all things that brand actually pays to promote uh, its, um, its existence and promote its new product. So um, in mind of both uh, luxury shoppers and non-luxury shoppers, this comes very, very high. And um, if you are in um, more premium and luxury um, niche, that especially uh, makes sense for you. Uh, why, why is it so? We can relate it with that the luxury shopper usually is a more educated consumer, right? People who make more money usually have uh, more education under their belt. So there is no surprise. But surprise to me was to find that this is very high for non-luxury shoppers. So this is the opportunity to, again, uh, position your brand small or large towards this demand without changing the product solely based on averting emission before uh, um, by introducing the product to consumer before uh, you start produ producing it um when we talk about pent-up demand there are uh, three groups that, you know, have uh, their own unique identity uh, that we believe we can tap into. Um, conscious consumers are usually those, again, that, you know, um, associate themselves that it's important for them, uh, but they are not environmentally radicals or this group as we call progressive because that group actually stopped buying new. When we interview these, um, you know, young people, they're saying, oh, you know, it's been a while. I know that uh, fashion is so bad for the environment. I stopped going into buying new. I do only thrifting or I'm involved in, you know, swapping or I'm going to my mom's closet. So this category might be lost forever. Uh, for fashion brands and this category is actually growing. So do we want to miss them or there is a way to engage them back by giving them a chance to, uh, to wear new and trendy? Because on the back of our mind, we don't want fashion industry to die, right? Fashion is a very important language to express themselves. Uh, express ourselves and it's more important especially for um, when people are younger and when they are very much like socially involved and this is the first thing that we see when we meet is before we open our mouth and say something about us this is the first impression so, and it's a, it's a very important channel for creative people to channel their creativity, right? So we want to, again, we, we, with all due respect to Green Camp, 
and I hope I will be forgiven for that. Um, I don't think that thrifting or reselling um, or pushing, you know, uh, slow fashion is going to change things much. We rather need to find a solution to service regular people by giving them uh, tools, by inviting them to be more conscious, and by also adapting tools that help um, industry as business. So the one more category that I want to touch upon, it's fashionistas and shopaholics. So this is a mainstream consumers. And again, by talking to them, we hear it again and again when girls tell us like, oh, I know it's bad, but I'm going to Zara. And they're expressing guilt. So how about we give them the way to shop uh, guilt-free? So um, all of that is pretty much can be summed up as we are about to enable a new motivation for consumer. Um, and that motivation will be a responsible buying. Uh, the motivations that are exist now are pretty much newness and discounts, also a little bit of impulse. So let's think about our mailboxes because we are not only part of the industry, we also consume, right? Nobody is naked here, so we buy. So let's think about how brands approach us when they want us to come. So the, the emailers usually say, this is a new collection, come. This is something new, we want to excite you new collab, new product line, new assortment, new trend. So newness is, uh, is a big motivation. So we can wander to the store or to e-com website to see what's there. The other major motivation right now is discount. So after a period of time, we get emails Come, the new, the used to new collection uh, is um, discounted, 50%, 30%. Then it's a final discount. And then a new collection comes. And this is over and over and over again. So imagine your brand sending emails or posting on social media that there is a new story that we are inviting you to come and shop, not because it's based on the discount, it's newness, but it's newness guilt-free. It's newness with values that we understand that is, are important to you. And uh, that new motivation uh, can be enabled by technology. Why now, I also want to a little bit um, remind all of us that um, fashion as a non-regulated industry uh, seeing a huge pressure, uh, it became a punching bag for media, for influencers, for ESG camp. So uh, the regulation is coming. Uh, there are over 40 pending regulations here in US and EU. Um, expect bans on um, unsold goods, expect bans on um, greenwashing, and of course, a pressure to minimize uh, carbon footprint that um, our industry produces. And we also believe that it's the right thing to do. Overall, again, uh, pushing sustainable retailing when uh, sustainable initiatives uh, can be introduced uh, once the product is ready for distribution, but, but before production. Um, we want to fulfill shift in consumer behavior and reduce carbon footprint. The company that you know I founded and um, uh, currently CEO uh, 
enables this new motivation by introducing a new technology. We call this uh, new technology uh, impact shopping. And it has two, two things. It's a tech, it's add-on to e-commerce that will help you to launch collections before you produce anything. So you can measure demand or produce up to demand. And we'll talk about it later because we all understand that uh, um, the industry production is based on the economy of scale. We cannot produce one thing at a time, right? It's not Louis Vuitton, whatever bag. We are talking about mass production. And also it's a new story to tell to consumers. Uh, practically, how this can all work. I'm sure that this is all familiar to you, spreadsheets um, or any other ways that you know that you are collecting the information about your your new collections, right? So nothing, no extremes. Uh, what it takes is just one image per product, uh, ecom friendly. Again, everyone has uh, samples, so shift this. Um, Ecom-friendly photo shoot just a little bit early, so you can uh, enable consumers to shop at that stage. Um, what is important uh, to run impact shopping campaign, and we are pitching for a limited time com campaign because we need to aggregate orders into bulk in order to send it to production. So what's important for consumer to understand how soon they will uh, receive their their product if they sh if they buy it now. So lead time, of course, is super important. Uh, we advocate uh, to start adopting our tech um, with the assortment that uh, has a lead time four to six weeks, eight weeks max. The MOQs or goal that we are creating orders to is a, just a threshold. Again, every brand has its own numbers, but uh, I also would like to uh, give a nod to World Collective because this is uh, your um, pretty much your resources. So if your MOQs are very big, uh, the threshold can be uh, smaller and uh, we, uh, with World Collective, can help you to find a good, a different supply chain to for a smaller batch production. So it's possible too. What's also important for us, and you will uh, understand why, is a, a carbon footprint per unit. Again, we don't want, not only want to enable consumers to, uh, to buy with impact, we want to measure the impact that the brands um, initiate by uh, adapting this uh, new way to sell. And we also want to distribute this impact to individual consumers. So measuring, recording is our mantra. So, uh, carbon footprint per unit is super important. If you don't know your carbon footprint, we work with partners. One of them, uh, them is um, um, Green Story, um, uh, who is a certified IBM uh, partner and can help you to calculate uh, that uh, uh, footprint per unit. So, um, what happens next? You know your collection. Uh, you, uh, we help you to calculate uh, carbon footprint per unit, or you already uh, done these initiatives and, and pretty much know how much it's, uh, uh, you're doing to environment, how much harm we doing to environment. <laughs> so um, the tech um, that is behind these initiatives will help you to launch new collection. All it takes is just one uh, screen to one interface to uh, create campaign. Uh, the product then will appear on your brand's website and it will be marked with impact, that beautiful orange. Um, logo that uh, we believe consumers will see soon all over the places and will know that that's their opportunity to to buy with impact rather than buy from warehouse 
And at the end of the campaign, which is a limited time, uh, we will see the aggregated orders and give you a report of the orders that you can, again, uh, then um, uh, go to your supply chain or um, help with uh, get help uh, by World Collective uh, with supply chain. And um, we as an enabling engine uh, also measuring and distributing impact created by this way of launching. This is a little bit to show how the product um, uh, can be marked on the product pages, highlighting that, you know, we are talking about uh, tech that uh, enables it on uh, brands uh, e-com. And uh, at the end of the campaign, impact is enabled, measured, and rewarded. Um, if you are in the mid-tier brand and work with marketplaces, that campaign can be simultaneously broadcasted to other platforms. Uh, and at the end of the campaign, the impact that is measured can be converted into tangible perks, discounts, social standing, whatever you feel you want to um reward your um consumers with again with the idea that we are creating a loop and um um and the consumers see the benefits of them uh start buying this way why sangrov um we will validate the um uh, sustainable initiatives for you again ESG compliant record um, we can help you to adapt this new way. We absolutely understand that this is not the way you're doing things now. So incrementality is a big thing. We'll allow you to do A-B testing. Um, we help to put you to position your uh, brand positively towards the conscious consumers and responsible buying. And we are proprietary pattern painting software. Um, hopefully I convince you that uh, there is a way to achieve uh, three big wins for all, boosting margins for your businesses, shopping with values for consumers, and together we can create um, impact for the planet. All it takes is adapting this new mentality and um, uh, one line of code uh, to your e-com platforms. And I'm um, happy to engage with you uh, if there are any questions. Yeah, Tatiana, thank you for that. It's, um, as a designer, it's very hopeful to see this and learn about it because um, I think if you're in a design position, like your your work has been cut back. You're not producing you're not designing as many styles as you used to. And if you do, you have, like you mentioned, you kind of have that guilt feeling like, oh, we have way too much or um, why do we need 10 new colors every season? But this is a way as a designer, you can still build out a nice collection and have all the visuals and do all the fun, the fun parts of designing and what is really in your, as part of your design job, um, but without, all the impact, you know, you can get that feedback up front and avoid going to production on styles that, that are not going to be sold and not needed and, and all of that. So, um, as a designer, this really excites me. Absolutely. And, um, um, uh, again, there are so many benefits depending on the size of the business, but for in small brands, right? Let's talk about small brands for a second. Uh, think about de-risking your decision making when you have an investor or you have uh, funds to send your collection to to production. Um, we don't want you to feel the anxiety or you know a pain of what if it's not going to fly, right? Um, and so that's that's uh, one thing. The second thing is for small brands, it's certainly positioned as help with cash flow, right? Um, 
again, we are collecting orders. We are charging consumers at the time they place orders. Um, if the orders didn't get uh, enough to meet your goal, whatever the goal is, um, and the orders are not confirmed, so we are refunding those uh, those consumers. You still have a record of uh, those who would like to buy from you this way. So at that time, you can say, you know, you placed uh, your order for yellow. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was not the popular, but we are producing blue. Would you like to instead get it in blue? Um, the impact that this order creates, we still measure and still reward with the um, with uh, potentially reward with the perks to this consumer because we want them to keep buying from uh, from you this way. So cash flow is a second thing. Um, when we speak to small brands, also who uh, operate mainly in wholesale, everyone has archives. So let's say your collection is 25 new units. You go to New York Fashion Week, you collect wholesale orders, people from retail come, you know, those buyers picked, I don't know, 12. What happens to another 13? It goes to an archive. Um, you already spent resources. You are ready to produce these things, but there is no orders. How about this goes towards consumers on your on your uh, brand website? So think about um, the excess not only of tangible things but excess of design as well. What if there are some pearls? What if there are some diamonds that never had um, an opportunity to see the light? And, and again, the new message to consumer loyalty to the, uh, to the brand, inclusivity, right? Because you are inviting consumers to be part of your story. You are saying that come in, your voice, your order, what you're doing with us, you're a part of it. So for small, uh, medium-sized brands, I would highlight those benefits. And of course, for a larger enterprise, for them, for example, minimi minimizing brands' carbon footprint is more important. So it all depends on the size of, the, uh, of your business. Tatiana, you had mentioned a new way to sell and a new way to tell the story. So I think this is um, the consumer needs to have a, a mind, a new mindset. They have to shift in their thinking because, right, because they, they're going to order something, but it's going to be an eight-week lead time or a six-week lead time, which I think is important in educating the consumer um, that it's not impulse shopping, it's impact shopping. So they have to be conscious about you know, this fall, I want to get two new pair of fall pants. So they start planning ahead. And instead of impulse shopping, they're going to look at the styles and consider and say, this will be, they'll know what's available in, you know, September and order in advance. But I think part of that is um, going back to the, a new way to sell. It's a great marketing story. You can educate the consumer and your customers how the impact that they're going to make by shopping in this way. And you can build that into the narrative of your brand story, whether you're small or large, you know, explaining how this works, explaining the, the, all the benefits and the impact they're going to make by shopping this way. But I think it, yeah, will take some time to get the consumer to adjust their thinking of that immediate gratification and become more conscious of their, their purchases and kind of plan it out a little bit more in advance. And I love the idea of this for the smaller brands, like you said, because, um, it, you know, there will be a cost for them using the software, of course, but they're going to save so much money on fabric and overproduction and waste and all of those other things. So, um, so yeah, I just think it's, it's a great opportunity for, 
a brand to educate their consumer of this is what we're doing. This is our new story. This is how it's going to work. You know, come along the journey with us and and give it a try and and shift shift the mindset. Uh, giving a try is a big thing. Again, we can uh, pitch to each other, you know, all day long. It's all it takes is adapting because otherwise consumers will never have this opportunity to shop. And speaking about the um, lead time, uh, we all know how popular Sheen is. You know how long the girls wait for their purchases to come from China to here? Is about like the same time. Uh, about those uh, same six weeks, mm. but they are uh, buying uh, disposable clothes, right? Uh, that will not survive even one yeah. wash <laughs> one season, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, not even a season, one yeah. wash. And try yeah. and trust me because I tried because yeah. you know <laughs> when I'm. When I'm saying about things, I, I, I want to know how, how, how it works. So um, it doesn't survive a single, a single washing. Uh, and, but consumers, uh, th that girl waits for that, for, th for that purchase. Why? Because she sees the value of the price, right? And again, I'm not saying that this will uh, disappear, that discounts will stop working. I'm just saying that there is an opportunity to sell uh, in a different way and communicate it to the different um, part of the emotions and the brand. Because after all, they are buying product, right? They need to like the product first. They need to like the dress first. And then, oh, okay, this is actually my opportunity to maybe this dress will never, you know, be made. So she or he has an opportunity to make it happen and make it happen in a, in a conscious way. So it's good for the soul. So good for the soul, it's a cherry on the cake. By itself, it will not move the product. The consumer still needs to like the product. But we can give them the variety of the product and what they like can be produced and shipped this way. Yeah, they get to vote. They um, kind of get to, they we, get to uh, vote. I would on... argue they need to order. They need yeah. to buy. Right, we are not collecting likes or opinions because right. it's not a commitment. Everyone knows that opinion group doesn't work. Who cares? Yeah. Yeah. They need to buy. Yeah, but they get a say, and their order, is, their order is important. And they yeah. they become part of kind of like the community of like, oh, you know, everyone's really fond of this style, and I'm super excited because I really like that style too, and it becomes kind of a collective. Um, you know, thing. And that involves the emotion too. like, oh, they have, you know, other people really like this too. It's going to be a great style. I'm super excited to get yeah. it. And they get a say in what, what you're producing that. So that makes them a little more involved and accountable and connecting to your brand. So absolutely. It's involving, it's creating a tribe around the brand. Uh, it's uh, boosting loyalty. It's uh, working with return customers. And, and again, Otherwise, we all doomed by spending uh, to um, Facebook and Instagram and pretty much um, competing uh, with each other for the um, for the opportunity of a few seconds on uh, someone's screen. Yeah. Could you explain um, two things I'm curious about is how does the software work if someone wants to to use it? And then kind of um, an overview of like the costs and the fees and how how would all of that work for a brand? Um, think about it as a, again, as a new business process on your side and enabling tech. So we will help you, we, will, um, we are a for-profit business, so we sell tech and uh, we have two models for bigger brands, we sell licenses and um, 
annual subscription. For smaller brands, we work on the uh, setup fee and uh, revenue share because we want encourage you to adapt and understand that it will take time. But more than that, uh, we need to change your mindset so, but we will help you again. We'll help you to identify the products that you have in mind uh, with other resources on the World Collective. We will help you to work uh, on supply chain. If your current supply chain is uh, too, too long, uh, there are plenty, plenty of um, um, opportunities for smaller um batch production so reach out not only to me reach out to brita if you're looking for those resources uh, reach out to world collective because again we understand that all of these pieces exist the digital um, footprint of product exists before anything is produced the sample exists the ways to do the again Ecom friendly photo shoots. Um, so all of this is manageable. Mindset is what I'm. Um, I think is the the biggest the biggest obstacle. Yeah. So you would help um, if somebody was going to implement implement this. That you would help with the onboarding process and the setup and absolutely. Does it does it integrate with any like PLM system or if they have an existing some sort of tracking uh, system, it, it, they... i mean we we have a solution for the uh, major ecom platforms shopify magenta is easy for us if you have something uh, unique and not uh, how can i say uh something custom talk to us and we'll see what we can do yeah do you have brands work using this already Yes, we uh we just released it uh, late last year. Uh, we're working with sustainable brands who are our biggest uh, advocates, you know, and these people already doing sustainable materials. So uh, we're recycling, reusing, and sustainability is part of their brand story. But I'm super interested to reach out to those who are not part of the, to whom, there is a hurdle to join or tap into this, you know, conscious movement and they don't know where to start. So we are the easiest uh, start for a journey to associate your brand with uh, sustainable initiatives. Yeah. So I think the biggest um, thing, well, not the biggest thing, but one thing to, I just, to look at and consider is really your MLQs. And as long as your factory and you have that agreement and partnership with the factory of what your minimums are, you can use this. So if you have a factory that says, hey, it's okay to only do 100 pieces, you can still use this, right? It doesn't have to be a larger quantity or a minimum of 300. Is it? It's just whatever the factory agreement is with you. Um, you know, maybe you're a domestic factory and you're just making 50 pieces. You can still uh, it's all, tool. you know, in correlation with the um, cons existing consumer audience. And I understand that if you're a single designer, 50 pieces at the time already kind of like large. But uh, for um, brands that, you know, have a millions of uh, followers on Instagram, where to, I mean, for them, the batch of uh, thousands of pieces is a small batch. So right. that 300 that, you know, I showed on the screen is actually the actual data that particular brand's MOQ is 300 and they produce in Turkey. Uh, but again, the um, the goal for aggregation can be whatever, it can be a real MOQ or it can be a fraction of MOQ because the same inventory, if you see that this is successful, think about the early sales data so if this if this um, particular SKU is successful, so you don't need to worry that uh, the part you sold through impact shopping, the rest you will sell through your uh, regular other distribution channels. Mm -hmm. I love the the hang tag 
and the logo and getting that on the website, the slide you showed that it says, you know, like this item is impact shopping. Um, so I thought that was just as a consumer. And if I went to a website and saw that, if I didn't know what it was, I'd be super intrigued and I would click on it and, you know, and learn more about it. Um, cause I think it's a really good draw in for consumers. So even if you have just certain items that are in, in the impact shopping, um, category, they, you can label those on the website. And I think it's just, yeah, another great way to get consumers in that mindset, you know, shifting, thinking, oh, what's impact shopping? They click on it and they see, oh, I get to pick, I could pick which color I want and order that. And, and it's going to have that, all the benefits of, of ordering that item in that way. So I think it's, yeah, as a consumer, it's exciting and, and attractive. So is, um, does anyone have any questions? I can unmute or you can hop in the chat. Um, I'm curious since we're here, I could you, if you could put in the chat, like where you're from and actually maybe what your job position is so we can kind of get a sense of, of who's here, that would be great. Where are you? <laughs> Okay, Berkeley, California, Portland, we've got Berkeley, and then we have Ukraine, we know, that's fantastic to join us from so far away, and um, ah, Zurich, Switzerland, fantastic. Nice. Yeah, it, what... Oh. I would love to know what your impression is and how do you think this could be a great thing for your brand or any, any comments? Um, I just think it's really exciting. Another fact that fascinated me from your, one of your first slides was um, the one that was showing social media versus, you know, what they're concerned about the luxury shoppers, because I think I think most of us or a lot of us, me, <laughs> when I look at social media and you see these huge influencers and there's these huge followings that they have, you kind of assume that, oh, you know, they're great. People follow them. People will buy what they're wearing and what they're selling. But your slide was showing that's not a true thing. It's they may get the likes, um, but their actual influence to buy for someone to buy something. Buy is very, very limited. Yes. Very limited. And having very. that the top bars that was more of, um, they're more concerned about, um, they're just more concerned about environment and impact. So it was a great fact to see that it's that percentage was much higher than celebrities and media and influencers. And, um, let's see, we do have a question. Do you have examples of how Sandgrove increased revenue? Any numbers that you can kind of share or, Talk about that a little bit. Uh, Andrew, we're under NDAs, but please reach out to me and we'll, uh, I, I'm happy to, uh, happy to discuss in more, more details in them. Yeah. Tat Tatiana put in there I, her LinkedIn yeah. connection so you can connect to that way and um, feel free to reach out to myself or Tatiana directly if you have further questions you think of and um yeah Tatiana any last thoughts um my thoughts are guys we need to at least try to do new things otherwise uh we will be repeating same things same things you know so please uh open eyes brain and all other you know resources and one by one, we can uh, achieve uh, better results financially and, uh, again, uh, more benefits uh, for all of us as a society. Yeah, I think it's super exciting option and tool. Like you said, this is a tool that can really make a difference. And it's exciting to see this work being done and to to see what you have come up with and, and are offering and I think it's a great way for 
brands, small or large, to definitely cut back on overproduction, you know, excess inventory, fabric waste, all of the resources it takes, and really streamline the process and and produce what's wanted. Produce only what what people are demanding and the ripple effect of that is huge, you know? So um, I commend you and and happy to connect with you and learn about Sand Grove and impact shopping. And, and thank you so much for sharing. Thank and you so much check for out. Um, yeah. um, I hope it's only beginning of our, uh, our collaboration journey. and our journey. And yeah. um, so happy to join the uh, world collective and to be useful to your members and to your audience yeah thank you so much sandgrove has a website you can google that if you're not familiar with world collective please google that as well it's an excellent resource um, it is a membership based platform that supports its nonprofit it supports brands in reaching the environmental and sustainability goals and implementing best practices, processes, there's resources, education, um, suppliers, partners that you can work with for everything from your carbon footprint to finding the right materials. So it's a fabulous resource to help get you there. And as Tatiana mentioned, there's several regulations coming through. <laughs> um, so the future of of what we can and cannot do is is going to be different, and I think we all need to start implementing these best practices so that we can be ready for uh, you know the new regulations and being you know striving towards all those goals that we all want to meet. So I appreciate everyone's time and thank you for coming. Again, reach out to any of us, either of us, if you have any questions. And Tatiana, thank you again for your time, and we'll see you on the yep. next one. Thank you, everyone. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.